This is Valley Public Radio. I'm David Alce, and welcome to Young Artist Spotlight. Support for Young Artist Spotlight comes from the Bonner Family Foundation and from the California Arts Council's Arts and Public Media Grant. Vocal music is the feature in this episode of Young Artist Spotlight, and we'll hear from a wonderful baritone, Christopher Rodriguez. He received his undergraduate degree from Fresno State, and he's just received his master's degree from Fresno State. Christopher has been kind enough to share his master's recital performance with us so we can share it with you. And we'll get to know him and the music a little better through engaging conversation. Christopher Rodriguez, welcome to Young Artist Spotlight. Hello. Great to have you here. So you've just completed a major milestone in your educational career, your music career, and your life, which is the master's degree. How's it feel? It feels great. feels good. It's just... It's kind of, I'm still a little bit in shock that it's all happened, you know, being, finishing the, uh, the, the master's degree and then kind of being there, I was standing on the stage, uh, singing the national anthem and I was like, wow, I'm really here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point of arrival. And it's going to be a point of departure too, for great things to come, which we'll talk about later in the program. Let's go back to the very beginning. Tell me about your start in music. So I had, a, I had a great start in music, uh, not one that many people really have. I was uh, really blessed to go to a performing arts elementary school. And it was a magnet school called Dr. Juliet Thorner Elementary in Bakersfield, California. And in this program, we had our normal, you know, first through sixth grade. And at the end of the day, from three to five, we would have three kind of periods. And you could pick between all these different classes they had jazz, they had orchestra, they had, you know, all of these different things that you could pick arts and crafts, anything that you could think of for, for a young child. And uh, I was lucky that we had a kind of a musical theater program, like a, a junior program. So we did things like Dear Edwina Jr. and The Seussical. And in that way, I also was lucky that we had a fantastic music program. Uh, I started choir in the third grade and I started orchestra on violin in the fourth grade and piano as well in the fourth grade. Well, that's a terrific start for any uh, person who's going to be involved in music, exposure to all those different elements. Boy, what a great thing. Yeah. Uh, when did you realize that you were, that singing was what you wanted to do? You know, it's funny because people always say, well, I knew. I didn't. I really didn't. I, I, I had gone back and forth. Um, in high school, I was involved in anything I could get my hands on. I was, I've always been a very, someone who wants to kind of go through with everything. And um, I was in choir and my junior year, I decided to audition for what we call the honor choir, the regional honor choir. And uh, I have horrible anxiety, horrible. I still to this day. And I auditioned and I scored I think with like 90 points out of 100 points and my choir director looks at me and he says this is something that you should really go towards and so after the last two years in high school uh, i ended up scoring higher again in my senior year going on to do the all-state uh, honor choir and that's when i knew that this is definitely what i want to do i want to be there for people like all of my music teachers had been and then I started to realize, I was like, oh, I'm pretty good at this. So I think this is something that I'm going to follow through on. What a great feeling. It's a great feeling. Yeah. And it's, you know, uh, yeah, it was, not everybody has that, you know, they've known forever. That's what they want to do. So, but that's a really, really good path. Mm -hmm. Well, enough talking for right now. We want to hear some music and we'll be listening to selections from your master's recital. First part of your master's recital included a, a set of arias because that's an important thing for any vocalist to be able to to to, to do and uh we're going to hear one from that people may not be so familiar with from eric korngold tell us about this piece yes mein zainen mein Venen is from uh korngold's die tote stadt which uh, translates to the dead city the dead state and it's it's a fantastic aria and i love to talk about it because it never actually happens uh, act two of this opera is what you would call a fever dream. And so the the main character is hallucinating all of this happening. So it's this wonderful, the Met Opera does it fantastically where it's it's just this over the, over the moon idea of what is this, this person going through? And so 
uh, mein Zehn und mein Venen, he's just saying, oh, my beloved, my wonderful. He's talking about this, this dreamlike state and how, how amazing it is. And it's just, it's very uh, smoke and mirrors. And so it's one of just those fantastic arias that everything is just fantastic and good and great. All right. Well, let's listen now as uh, our guest on Young Artist Spotlight today, Christopher Rodriguez, performs music of Eric Korngold, Mein Zainen, Mein Venen.
That was a wonderful baritone, Christopher Rodriguez performing music of Eric Korngold Meinzanen Meinzanen from Die Tote Stadt, the unique opera from Korngold, and opening music on our episode of Young Artist Spotlight, where we're featuring Christopher Rodriguez. Lovely performance. So in the middle of your master's recital, you did a couple of song cycles, and one we don't have time for, the Ray Von Williams Songs of Travel, which is just lovely, but a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful surprise in there, which we will hear next from Antonin Dvorak. Tell us about this Antonin Dvorak. What is it and, and how did you come, come to pick it? So the Dvorak song cycle is Sigansky Melodia. And I, I came upon these, let's see, it's 2021. So I probably came upon these um, right around when I start, uh, finished my senior recital in 2018. And I heard the most famous Gdysh uh, Minestaramatka. And it is one of the most famous, you know, sopranos all over the world do it. And it's kind of just in their repertoire. And I, I kind of sat down and I said, you know, I'm gonna take a take a second. I'm gonna go through all of these songs and I'm gonna just listen. And and what I found was this beautiful, you know, scenic, almost tone poem like song cycle about the native peoples of Bohemia and Moravia, the Roma people. And you can hear it in the music. You can hear it, especially in the first piece in uh Zas Milasko's Me. You can hear it in the wonderful do -do 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 and you can hear everything that Dvorak throws in from his culture and from from uh, the Czech lands, and it's just a fantastic song cycle. Yeah, uh, Dvorak, you know, uh, in his native land, of course, really noted for being he's almost an ethnomusicologist in the way that he sourced folk music and rhythms and motives and worked them into kind of legitimate concert music. Mm -hmm. And he had the same effect in the U.S. too when he came to the states in late nineteenth century and and wrote the New World Symphony. You know the yeah. Largo Largo movement is. Uh, you know he spoke to con every composer he met and said, "Look, American composers, you're surrounded by this wonderful source music in the form of uh, indigenous people's music and African American spirituals and all that, mm -hmm. and uh, you re you should be using more of that to create a uniquely American musical sound." Yes, absolutely. So, so uh, looking forward to hearing this uniquely Czech sound of these gypsy melodies by Antonin Dvorak, as sung by our guest on Young Artist Spotlight today, Christopher Rodriguez.
That was baritone Christopher Rodriguez performing a song cycle from Antonin Dvorak, Gypsy Melodies, or Roma Melodies, right? And what the Czech name again is? Siganske Melodie. 
Okay, yeah, Dvorak showing his love of uh, native musical forms. How many languages do you sing in? You know, I, at one point I, I started counting. Uh, I've I've sung in just at Fresno State. I've sung in English, German, French, Italian, Russian, Czech. I did Polish on my undergrad. Uh, I did Arabic uh, when Dr. Carrie Earnhardt came to Fresno State. Um, I've done Dutch, Finnish. And I'm sure that there are some that I'm forgetting. Latin, of course. Um, so yeah, 10 or 11. It, it, it really depends on the structure of the language. Uh, one of the hardest, of course, actually, I think is English. It's, it's very hard to sing in your native language because we have all of these things that we do. And then you can't apply that to singing. You have to relax. So that's why, you know, the bel canto era, the beautiful singing in Italian is easy because it's just vowels and it just flows. That's interesting. And how many languages do you actually speak conversationally? Uh, English and Spanish conversationally. Uh, my Italian, I can get away with it. When I was studying in Italy, I could yeah. I could get away with it. But you put me up against uh, someone from there, and I'd probably sink down into a corner. <laughs> <laughs> well, another thing that, that you and I spoke about when we were preparing for this episode was uh, your love of uh, modern day composers, living composers. So it was very important to you in your master's recital to include uh, music of living composers. And that's what we'll hear uh, in the rest of the program. Tell me a little bit more about that and why it matters to you. So I started singing contemporary music uh, probably a few years ago. And I've always been friends with composers. You know, we have a fantastic uh, composition program at Fresno State. And I started to realize that, you know, these people are alive, they're sitting in the audience and they really wanna hear their music performed. And so when the Fresno State Art Song Festival started, it uh, had a portion where composers would compose. It's a competition and there would be a specific libretto and there would be specific rules and it would have to be for voice and piano. And so luckily my teacher, Dr. Maria Briggs picked me to do one of the compositions. And um, that was So Together, which is on this program. And that was back in uh, 2020 and February of 2020. And I really realized that, you know, singing works and working with composers that were living, being able to sit here and say, oh, well, I kind of like when this happens and this happens and then they can fix it. You can't do that with Mozart. He's been dead for almost 300 years. So being able to sit there and be able to talk to composers and, and not only, you know, it's an educational thing between both of us. It's a fantastic relationship. And, you know, back in the day with Verdi and with Mozart, they had these conversations with their singers. So being able to work with living composers, it's, we're doing exactly what they did then. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. I, I really like that. So the first living composer whose work we're going to hear was involved in this year's Art Song Festival. He's from the Bay Area, Kurt Erickson. Yes. Tell us about this piece. Oh, Kurt Erickson. So Kurt Erickson and I, we met uh, in uh, 2000, we met on Facebook in 2019, a part of a uh, Facebook group called the New New Forum for Classical Singers. And he had posted on to this group and he said, I'm doing a commission consortium. And of course I had to kind of Google, I was like, what is a commission consortium? And basically what it was is he was looking for baritones all over the world to premiere this piece in exchange we got to premiere this piece for free because usually commissions are that you have to pay a chunk of change. And the payoff was this, he got premieres all over the world and we didn't have to pay for a commission. And so I was like, absolutely sign me up. So he started to send me the pieces and they were just absolutely riveting, riveting American music. I was able to premiere two of the pieces because unfortunately with COVID we were, we had to cancel our premieres, but I was able to sing Hear Bullet on my recital. And it is just one of the most amazing pieces I've ever sung because it's, it's, you can hear it in the music. You can hear kind of this energy that he puts into this cycle. So it's a fantastic cycle. And they're both, both the uh, librettists and the composer are both Fresno natives. Wonderful. Okay, so let's listen now as Christopher Rodriguez performs work of Kurt Erickson, Hear Bullet. Oh, and Chris 
whistle and flash. Here is the clavicle snapped a wish. The aorta's open of ours, the leap that makes at the synaptic gap. Here is the adrenaline rush you crave. That inexorable flight, that insane puncture into heat and blood. And I tell you to finish what you started, because he Triggering my tongue's explosives For the rifling I have inside of me Each twist of the road spun a deeper That was a baritone Christopher Rodriguez performing Here Bullet by a living composer, Kurt Erickson. Uh, next in our series of living composers music, Christian Cruz and the song So Together. What should we know about this? So So Together is a really interesting premiere. Uh, I premiered it back in 2020, as I said earlier, at the Fresno State Arts Song Festival, but I was never allowed to meet the composer. So the competition directly states that uh, composers and librettists are not allowed to work with the singers. It's supposed to be kind of this, uh, this single blind experiment, experiment, but single blind composition uh, for the competition. Uh, I premiered this piece and it won uh, both the composition award as well as the audience choice award. And, um, and then I was able to meet Christian and it is uh, words with uh, the poet laureate Juan Felipe Herrera and it it's it's fantastic. It, you know, it's funny that they, it was right before COVID because so together. It really has this this ideology of being together with people, and and um, I thought it was really interesting because I wasn't able to kind of speak with the composer, but afterwards we were able to talk about all of these different thematic things that he did, and it, it's it's a lovely piece of music. Yeah, that, that's really interesting to hear. Yeah, because sometimes you get to have that interaction with the composer, and then sometimes it's you don't, and you just got to kind of go with it. And mm -hmm. so it's interesting to hear what comes out of, 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 yeah, of both. Uh, so here, words by Juan Felipe Herrera, uh, music by Christian Cruz, the song So Together, performed by Christopher Rodriguez. What do we do when our hearts want me and What do we do when the world is split in two? And you and me, and me and you are split from two. Oh, 
What do we do? Where do we go? What do we do? There's a sky drifting by, wondering why. Christopher, that was lovely. That was So Together by Christian Cruz with words by the Poet Laureate Juan Felipe Herrera. Two more pieces we'll hear. Next one from Kimberly Osberg. And this is a commission as well, correct? Yes. So this, uh, Anything Works For Me, is a commission from her, uh, it's from quarantine, actually. And so I was on Twitter, as one does, just scrolling, and I would seen one of her posts and it said, it was probably like the first or second week of quarantine. And uh, she was saying, you know, for a few dollars, I think I spent maybe $10 on this commission uh, and I'll write. And I said, well, how do you feel about putting uh, poetry and, and voice and piano? And she was like, absolutely. So she said, well, what do you, what do you want? And I said, anything works for me. And that famously became the title of the piece. And uh, Kimberly and I thus have been working together now for, for quite some time. And uh, this piece she, she put together, I think probably in a week. And it's from her uh, commissions from quarantine. And then we, uh, after the premiere, I got another commission from her and uh, it's called titled You Us Me, which will be uh, premiered hopefully later in the year. But it was really interesting because, I mean, I spent $10 and then a piece was was done in a week. And now it's just a very pivotal moment in my life because I'm able to sit here and I'm able to message her and, and, and text her and say, hey, how do you feel about this, this, and this? So it really is that relationship, that that composer and that singer relationship. Well, let's hear the fruits of that, of that relationship now. Uh, from composer Kimberly Osberg, Anything Works For Me song here by Christopher Rodriguez. Today I ate a Granny Smith, so of course I thought of you. I slurped and nibbled and crunched, crunched until my tongue forgot what it was like to touch clean tea. Like an untold disposable secret today, along with all the rest, I threw it out. Breaking so 
But Christopher, that was just gorgeous. Really, Thank you. really great. Yeah. Uh, music of K Kimberly Osberg, composer, born in 1992. She's a really living yeah. composer. Yes. Uh, the name of the work, Anything Works for Me. One final piece, in a certain way, we kind of saved, saved the best for last because this composer you have a special relationship with. Tell us about uh, what we're going to hear next. Yes, this is There Is No Dynamite from Dr. Kenneth Froelich's State of Jefferson. Dr. Kenneth Froelich uh, has been my teacher for, oh gosh, the last four years, four, four or five of my seven years at Fresno State. He has taught me theory. He has taught me a seminar of contemporary music. He, he really has been a very crucial teacher in my life and, and I'm very, very grateful for him. Uh, this opera, State of Jefferson, is about the state of Jefferson um, in uh, the Northern California, Oregon uh, area. And it is, it's fantastic music. It really is. I was able to do a studio recording of it in January of 2020. And it's for, I believe it was, a, it's a string quartet. There's piano and there's percussion. And this is the last scene of the opera. And Stanton Delaplane is who I um, am playing. And it's 1942. So the opera, it, it's fantastic. The opera goes back and forth between past and present. And the ending of the opera ends with Stanton kind of just wandering out and saying, you know, there's no dynamite, there's no rebellion, only me. And it's this, it's this moment. And we know, we know because uh, when we are in the present in the opera, Stanton is no longer there. So we know that he ultimately dies, but he kind of sits back and he looks at everything that's happened over in the opera. And that's, it's this fantastic uh, five minute aria. And then it ends with the wind is blowing and I don't hear a sound. And it's just this overarching, you know, he's just looking out and that's it. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Wow. Wow. Well, let's listen now to the work of a wonderful educator and a fantastic composer, Kenneth Froelich, professor of composition and more at Fresno State. There is no dynamite from his opera, State of Jefferson, sung here by baritone Christopher Rodriguez.
That was music of uh, Fresno State professor and uh, composer Kenneth Froelich from his opera State of Jefferson, the piece There's No Dynamite, sung by Christopher Rodriguez, our guest on Young Artist Spotlight. Boy, what a, what a great, that's the way you ended your master's recital and a great way to finish up the music today. Thanks so yeah. much. I'm glad, really delighted to be able to share that with our audience. So we started the program talking about you just receiving your master's degree. It was a great state of arrival. And as I mentioned, the state of departure to things next. What's coming up next for you in music? So I will be moving to Denton, Texas in August to start my Doctor of Musical Arts at the University of North Texas. Congratulations to you on that. How exciting for you. Thank you. Have you ever lived outside of California? No, I've done a lot of I've done a lot of visiting. I've been to over like 26, 27 states and a few countries, but I've never lived outside of California. So it'll be interesting to say the least. Good for you. Good for you. One one last question. So in your arc as a you know, so to this date as a singer, can you identify kind of when you kind of made the transition or at least the transition and understanding of, oh, this is about more than just hitting the right notes and remembering the words and and making the transition into understanding about making a, an emotional statement 
telling a story. Yeah, you know, it, it was somewhere somewhere in undergrad. So I, I was I was lucky enough. I, I've had some fantastic opportunities that Fresno State has given me, both uh, studying opera in Italy and and doing all of this. But there was somewhere in undergrad that I finally realized that anyone can stand on stage and recite words in in any language. But it's when you make it that performance, it's when you reach into the people that are listening to you, when you reach into their hearts, into their souls, and then you give them whatever you're singing. That's when I realized that this isn't just me standing here singing a gorgeous melody. It's it's a performance. It's it's an experience. And and I I realized that sometime in undergrad and, and ever since then I, you know, it's it's really been about less about me and more about the art and the experience and giving that to people and, and having them walk out of a performance and saying, you know, well, that was, that really, it touched me. And, and that's what I really want to do with my music. I want people to feel exactly, you know, what they should be feeling after listening to the music and just going, you know, well, that was wonderful and having this experience. Boy, that's a terrific statement. It's so great to hear that. Christopher Rodriguez, thank you so much for joining us on Young Artist Spotlight and for uh, giving us an experience like that, too. It's been great, great chatting with you. Thank you so much. That concludes another episode of Young Artist Spotlight. Thanks to our wonderful guest performer, baritone Christopher Rodriguez. Thanks also to collaborative pianist Jordan Williams. Special thanks to CMAC for video production. Support for Young Artist Spotlight comes from the Bonner Family Foundation, and from the California Arts Council's Arts and Public Media Grant. For Valley Public Radio, I'm David Alves.